Hello users. Today, let's unbox and compare Midwinter. A memorable blend of strategy and 3D action, developed by Mailstorm Games in 1989. First, let's take a look at the package. This is the original Atari ST release. Let's remove the sleeve and open the box. The ST version comes on two 3.5 inch copy protected diskettes. This is the technical supplement with loading instructions, as well as a reference of all in-game keys and control icons. Then there's a notepad with the island's map printed on each page. Here you can write down people's locations or any other note necessary. Next is the game's manual which contains the backstory and a detailed description of the game's mechanics. The game's scenario revolves around the Midwinter Report, a classified joint project of the USA, Soviet Union and the EU. It was a desperate plan to combat global warming which was becoming irreversible by 2015, leading to global unrest and support for eco-terrorist groups. According to this plan, global cooling was to be achieved by artificially favoring the conditions that can lead the planet to an ice age. The catalyst to maintaining high reflectivity and low temperatures would be dust formations in the atmosphere by either massive volcanic eruptions or impact of a giant meteorite. In 2039, such an impact occurred. Whether it was a meteor or a nuclear weapon remains unknown. But the aftermath was a worldwide financial catastrophe within five years and a temperature drop to an average of minus 25 degrees in Northern Europe by 2060, leading to a mass immigration crisis. It was this year that a small group of settlers landed on a newly emerged island in the Atlantic. The game is set 39 years later, in 2099. The island is now prosperous, seeing a population increase from new settler arrivals since 2095. But peace and prosperity was not meant to last, as General Masters one of the new settlers of Shining Hollow to the southeast has formed his own military force and started a campaign to take over the whole island. You play the role of John Stark, a 33-year-old peace officer, head of the island's police force. Your mission is twofold. First, inform the locals of the threat and convince them to join the resistance. Then, utilize them to delay General Master's advance and ultimately defeat him by blowing up his headquarters. This is easier said than done, as you'll need to find your way through the snow-covered terrain in order to reach them. Whether they accept to join or not depends on their relationship with the person contacting them. So a citizen who's not in good terms with John Stark is better to be recruited by another member of the resistance. Each person has got different strengths and weaknesses. For example, someone good with explosives might not be as good at sniping or skiing. 
So, it's best to choose the right person for the right task. The key figure for the resistance is Professor Christensen, who, when taken to a radio station, will be able to recruit a large number of people. The manual contains personnel files throughout its pages, even though they are also available in-game. These serve as a secondary form of copy protection. As before starting the game you will be asked for the names of two members of the resistance, which you'll need to look up here in order to be able to continue. Midwinter is turn-based, split into two parts. The decision-making, icon-driven static screens and the first-person 3D action. In the first you can among other things enter or sabotage buildings, sleep and tend to your wounds or study the map. While in the second is where you fight your way through the island to Shining Hollow. Your main means of transportation is your trusty pair of skis but you can find different kinds of armed vehicles such as snow buggies and hand gliders making your trip faster, safer and less tiresome. Time is of critical importance, as each character's turn takes two hours. When the last member of your team finishes his or hers watches are synchronized and you can go on with the next turn. In the meantime, General Master's army is advancing. So you'll have to coordinate your team's moves to protect the heat mines, destroy the enemy resupply buildings and vehicles and finally reach Shining Hollow to blow up the enemy headquarters. Last but not least, the package contains a color map of Midwinter's Island. Let's take a final look at the box and its contents. Midwinter was originally developed for the Atari ST by Mike Singleton, but also released for the Amiga and IBM PC compatibles. The light-sourced solid 3D graphics are excellent at providing a believable depiction of the island's snow-covered mountainous terrain. The ground is made up of complex shapes as opposed to the simple pyramids seen in most games of the era, while trees, buildings and vehicles also look very nice. Furthermore, the speed is very good despite the 3D complexity. The 2D graphics feature nice colorful static images, which add to the immersion. The game's sound is limited to some basic effects for skiing, gunshots and engines. But a music track is absent. Gameplay is quite absorbing, and it will keep you in front of your Atari for a long time. The Amiga version is indistinguishable from the ST, as far as graphics and gameplay are concerned. Though the sound effects are a bit better, sporting improved quality and stereo effects which prove quite useful when trying to spot the enemy.
The PC version supports CGA, EGA and VGA graphics cards, while it is compatible with Adlib and the MT32 for the sound effects. It looks almost identical to the ST and Amiga versions, with barely noticeable differences in some of its colors. Midwinter is atmospheric and quite addictive on all platforms. Let's see them side by side. That was an immersive game with relaxing and absorbing gameplay. Did you play it users? Until next time, here are some more videos for you.